The Madden Show is brought to you by StarCityGames.com, and check this out. On April 13th and 14th, the StarCityGames.com Open Series comes to Milwaukee, and this event is going to be huge. We're talking hundreds of players, a standard open with $10,000 in prizes paid down to 64th place, a legacy open with $10,000 in prizes paid down to 64th place, at least 16 players qualifying for any StarCityGames.com Invitational in 2013, live coverage all weekend long courtesy of SCG Live, and as much Magic the Gathering as we can pack into one weekend. So make plans to join us when the StarCityGames.com Open Series comes to Milwaukee, and we'll see you there. Welcome to another edition of the Maddie Show. This week we dive headfirst into my favorite time of the year, spoiler season. Oh baby, it's springtime or wrapping up or turning around a block in style. Gate crash was one thing, but my god, do we have some sweetness coming in Dragon's Maze. Let's begin with my exclusive spoiler, shall we? Now we begin with a bounce spell. Now, bounce spells have been around as long as magic has existed. We began with Unsummon, a card whose power level remains so consistent that it's seen in tournament winning decks to this day. Now let's say you have a spell called Far. That is unsummoned. Now, when you have a split card, like I do here, you have to balance out what they do with their cost. You can't just give them unsummoned. Plus, something else, you got to keep it fair. But let's face it, we don't want fair on our tournament-worthy magic cards, which is why there's another effect here. Let's call it the Edict Effect. Now, first seen on Diabolic Edict, where these types of cards got their name, this is the act of making an opponent sacrifice a creature. Now, for our baseline, it is two mana at instant speed. Want two mana but flashback? Sorry, bud. It's got to be a sorcery. You want to gain life off the creature they sack? Well, you got to pay another mana for Tribute to Hunger. But when you have Unsummon and Edict together, and you confuse them for a single low price, you got yourself a killer card. Now, here is Far and Away. Yep, yep, yep. That right there is one fine spell. It slices, it dices, it gives you such value. If there is one thing that Magic players like most in this world, after Jace the Mind Sculptor, it is value. The value on this thing is off the charts. Now, what deck wants to play this? Now, first up are all the Esper Mages with their Lingering Souls and their Augur of Boluses. Second are the new Delver decks, often black-blue with Dust Mantle Seers at the helm. And this is pretty much the best spell I can imagine them flipping. It flips Delver and it takes care of Boros Reckoner. Thank you. And remember, Fuse cards are performed when fused from left to right. So if your opponent has a Geist of St. Traft and an Avacyn's Pilgrim, just fuse far and away. Bounce the Pilgrim, and all they have left is the Geist. Now, needless to say, this thing would be pretty sweet when put upon an Isochron Scepter, and I think even Shardless Agent would be interested in cascading into either half. Remember, you only need one half the trigger from a Cascade, and then you get to choose which either half you want. Now, all I know is this thing is definitely getting cube consideration and should be an all-star in the coming standard. I want to thank Wizards of the Coast for my exclusive spoiler, as always, and let's get started with the rest. Now, up first is Varals, the Scar Stripe. Now, first, seriously, Wizards, the name is ridiculous, Varals. It's like your cat stepped on the friggin' keyboard, right up there with old th- 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 on the sweet pronunciation scale. Anyway, I don't know if you noticed, but this car is completely insane. Let's count the ways. Now, first, good old Grey Ogre, three mana, two, two, okay? Second, there are exactly four ways to sacrifice creatures repeatedly in standard for no cost. Two of those cards suck, and two of them just want a Pro Tour. Thirdly, the provided ability on this card is freaking ridiculous. Now, seriously, look, if I don't know if you've heard the sounds late Wednesday night, but that sound was every single Death Shadow disappearing from the internet. Because holy damn, people, you pay a black and it just dies. You pay another black and you put 13 plus one plus one counters on any creature you want, especially those with, I don't know, hex proof. Jeez, this card is absolutely terrific, and I hope a sicko John Bill can make it shine, because if there is one card that needs some love, Vexing Devil is that card. It is oh so good with Varals. Now, moving on, let's discuss a card that is just as good as Far and Away in Turn and Burn. Man, this card does all the things, and I totally love it. My primary reason for loving this card, it utterly dominates two incredibly powerful abilities right now. The Leaves Play Triggers for Angel of Serenity and Thrag Tusk. Now look you got to play this smart. You have to play around them having a Restoration Angel, and you can't just auto-spend five mana answering a Thrag Tusk. I get it. But if you do, and you traded a card for theirs, and they gained five life, well, that's not the end of the world. I mean, yeah, they got value out of Thrag Tusk. It's actually not difficult to get value out of the most incredibly juiced creature in the past two years. But the ability to two-for-one, almost by default, is very powerful, and I expect to see this card in top-tier decks. And seriously, 
a burn spell called burn nice i'll be right back to chat up the new planeswalker and dragon's maze and much more the Magic Trail is brought to you by StarCityGames.com, where you can now order items from the Liz Nugent Creature Collection. This month, featuring the Vampire product line, you can purchase sleeves, dice bags, playmats, deck boxes, card boxes, and more with the new Vampire design. Plus, two free Vampire tokens will be included with every order over $5 between now and March 15th. Visit StarCityGames.com and order your Liz Nugent Creature Collection products today. So let's chat Ral Zarek, shall we? The only Planeswalker in the set. This is a very good walker in decks that like to attack and in control decks that like to eke out all the advantages. Let's discuss some abilities. We begin with the tap and untap. Now this does a few things. First, it can give your creature pseudo-vigilance as you bash in. Then you untap your guy and tap something there's whatever. Second, it lets you bash in with your best creature as you tap their blocker and you untap a mana of yours, per se. Thirdly, it lets you use a creature's ability, like Mercurial Chemisters, then untap it to use its ability again or untap it and tap something of theirs in order to attack with it basically that's a pretty sweet ability the second ability i mean it's lightning bolt there's not much to say here other than feels good man doesn't gain you life like a johnny vengeant but that card eh, is a little bit pushed anyway lastly we have his ultimate where we will soon learn who is the luckiest among us which is to say brian kibler will always get five turns and christian calcano will always get one to flip heads just before it falls off the table and lands on tails Advent of the Worm is next, and that card is so sweet. Oh, man. Surprise, Tremors. End of your turn. Super awesome worm. Then during combat, when you Azorius charm it or try to kill it, I'll just Druid's Deliverance and get me another one. Sure, you'll still deal with the first worm, but it's just like that guy in Jurassic Park said. It's the second one that gets you. Clever girl. Anyway, I love the fact that you can't just attack into four open mana anymore against a green-white deck. Between Restoration Angel and Advent of the Worm, there will always be something. Deputy of Acquittals is next and reminds me most of White Mane Lion. The difference between these types of cards and Time Spiral Blocks, Stone Cloaker being another excellent example, was that they required you to return another creature. This lady does not and should be an absolute all-star and limited, basically one of the best creatures to mix in that environment. Obsidot's Aid is next and my god, people, really? Permanent? Do you know what you're dealing with here? You're faithless looting and you're discarding nickel bolus and oops, you just got bolus. Bringing back fatties or cards like Oblivion Ring is no freaking joke and it gives yet another reason to ensure that you pack that graveyard hate. Omnidor, Thrag, Fire, Bolus, Far Seeky was a deck before Dragon's Maze and it just got a hell of a lot scarier. Speaking of discarding cards, how about we both, you know, just mind twist each other. Is that cool? Except I'll have a 6-4 when it's done. Say hello to Sire of Insanity. And my God, does he live up to that name? Yes, that is freaking mind twist. Every turn, all of it. Best part, I know exactly what creature type my Cavern of Souls is naming. Hells yes! This is the card that is going to stop those ridiculous Sphinx's Revelation decks from getting completely out of hand. Yes, it's 6 mana, and yes, it's just a Crawl Worm, but when you have any sort of advantage and drop Sire here, he is going to put a very fast and dangerous clock into effect. Now, the real killer, it's a card called Heartless Summoning. I'll let you brewers go ahead and give it a go, but I have a feeling Heartless Summoning plus Sire of Insanity just might be a thing in the future. He's quite a bit sexier at 4 mana than 6. So how about the closest thing this set is going to get to Dark Confidant, yet is not quite as good, but does combo perfectly with Sire of Insanity. Now check out Blood Scrivener. Holy moly, do I love this card. This card is terrific. The zombie decks love it. The red black aggro decks eat it up. And hell, even Dredge could be pretty scary with old Scrivener out. Now, unfortunately, it does not stack, but it does have some really interesting interactions as it checks for that ability every single time you draw a card. So for instance, let's say you only have one card in hand and that card is a Brainstorm. Now when you do cast that Brainstorm, the first thing you're going to do is draw two and lose a life. And then you're going to draw the other two cards per Brainstorm's ability and then put two of those cards back. So if you were to cast, say, Whispering Madness, you would discard your hand, but replace the first drawn card with two, lose a life, and then draw the rest of the cards equal to the number that you discarded. Pretty freaking sweet. Chugging right along, we have Sacrifice Geist of St. Traft. I mean, uh, Renounce the Guilds. This card is just made for old Geisty, but it does quick work of Boros Reckoner, Falcon Wrath Aristocrat, and another annoying multicolor permanent like, I don't know, Detention Sphere. Also, how about that flavor text? Is that what you call compromise? Go, go, Ravnican drama. Rounding out my Dragon's May spoiler show, let's discuss the split cards this go around. Now, first of all, I love the fuse mechanic with a whopping 10 mechanics to try and distribute around a small set. It was no mean feat to find something new that was subtle, but an exciting twist on an old favorite. It also gets around Snapcaster shenanigans, which is very much appreciated. Anyway, Beck and Call is my favorite of these, as combo elves just officially became a thing in modern. And by the way, Cloudstone Curio is worth like 12 bucks now. Yay for bulk rares that are not worth absurd prices. Welcome to MTG Finance. 
Moving on, Armed and Dangerous is a game-ending monster in Limited. Breaking and entering will be a casual superstar as it's the closest thing to glimpse the unthinkable in the whole block. Toil and Trouble is super cute and may work wonders in that red-black Scrivener deck I was talking about. But lastly, I love me a wear and tear. Two great tastes that taste great together. These two fundamental abilities will never be sexy, but I love seeing how Wizard slices and dices them in different ways to help give you maximum flexibility. And that's all I got for this go-around. I'll be back soon for another show just one week before Brad Nelson and I team up for our complete Dragon's Maze set review. Sure to be a fun time, as always. I hope you'll join us. So until next time, Magic players, this is Evan Irwin. Tap in the cards so you don't have to. like the fatties.